tonight is a really big treat. We've got um, Mark, who he runs a podcast called Adventures in Design. Have any of you heard of it? Woo! So he's based out of Long Beach. He's now interviewed 400 people from the creative director at Adidas to, you know, just like stories from people who are doing the thing and really doing it and hearing the business side, hearing the struggles, hearing that. And so tonight he's going to share what he has sort of rounded up from interviewing 400 plus people to give you a 20, you know, short talk on basically just the things that he's learned and here's some success stories. So come on down. And thanks tons for being here, bud. Thank you. My goal is to convince you tonight to invest in you. And I find that that is the most important thing that anyone can do, regardless if you're a creative, uh, a different sort of business professional. I've really become a firm believer in the power of you. And I've seen this happen time and time in front of me, and I actually feel that I'm living it. And I see a lot of folks that are trapped and they want so badly to have a different life and a different experience, but they just won't give it to themselves. And it drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> My name is Mark Bricky. I make a podcast. 400 interviews, now 575 episodes, and there's one common characteristic that I see over and over again. Successful people have learned how to invest in themselves. And I cannot stress to you how important that is. And you may think that you're doing that, but I would really, really encourage you to think about how much you is in your life. Where you go for eight, 10 hours a day, what you do with your after hours, how much of that is really going to something that you wanna be doing. Successful people give themselves permission to try, to fail, and to succeed. Trying is such a hard part. I don't know that sounds kind of cliche, but I'm serious, like you've just got to get started. I meet people all the time, big ideas, big dreams, they won't give themselves permission to get going. Everybody is looking for that secret of success, right? Like what's the quick way to get there? And if you look around the internet, top five this, top 10 that, but the real secret of your success, you're looking at it every morning when you get up and go and look in the medicine cabinet in the mirror and check out your, your bed head. Like, there is something that's deeply original about you. The more you get in tune to that, the more you follow that, the more successful you become. Think about all your heroes. Think about all the people that you admire. There is something that is incredibly unique about them. You've got to figure out how to follow that path. But it's not easy because every story, act two, now that we're in act two, thank you very much. Every story has a villain, right? It's not as easy as it sounds just following yourself. There's always gonna be a villain. And villain, villains can take many, many, many shapes. Some are really easy to spot. The easiest would be the devil. Everybody knows the devil's a bad guy, right? Seems fun to me, but I'll take your opinion. Darth Vader, is he bad? Is he not? At the end of the day, before he became blue hologram Darth Vader, as the movies go on, you realize Darth Vader is just a guy stuck in middle management. <laughs> he's not running that ship. He's just doing what he's told. Choking some people out, blowing up some planets, interrogating his daughter. But at the end of the day, he's taking orders from somebody else. So he's the type of villain that it's very hard to figure out. Is he evil or is he just trying to get the job done through me? But the villain is like a bad job, right? Bad work can be like a villain because it's temptation and cash. It's temptation and exposure, right? Who here has ever been offered exposure for a form of payment or part of the payment? Yeah, more of you have, I know. Don't worry about raising your hands. Temptation and false opportunities. Temptation that takes you away from working on you. Who here has had a great idea? You're so excited, you're so stoked to get started, and then a job pops up. You're not excited about the job, but you go, well, it is $1,200, and I really need to make $1,200. So you take that job, because it's gonna be fast, and then you're gonna give back to you. The job's never fast, you lose the money, you don't make the efficient $1,200, 
And when it's done, what do you have? $300 deposit, nine months later, the remainder after you emailed them twice. Oh, marketing didn't send you your check. That's weird. No, it's not. Bad work is like drugs. You constantly need to get your fix because it's not paying you enough. It's not getting you high anymore, right? You constantly need more drugs. You constantly need more work because it's not the right work. It's not the right amount of money. And once you're addicted, you're stuck. I want you to ask yourself right now, where you got to go tomorrow and work? Is it really where you want to be or are you addicted to that opportunity? Have you fallen into the American dream? Do you have credit cards? Do you have automobile payments, leases, kids you want to send to college, a house? Are you going someplace tomorrow because you're addicted to the opportunity that somebody gave you? And the whole age old is you make more money, you spend more money. And that just keeps you grinding away, strung out on the drugs, looking for your next fix, which for some people I hear comes on the 1st and the 15th or every other Friday. I don't know. It's hard to get off the clients. It's really, really, really hard to figure out a way to create a lane for yourself. But if you look at people that you admire, that you're interested in, they have found a way to create that lane. Act three, be the hero, right? Every story has a villain. Sometimes it's Darth Vader. Sometimes it's the evil hood sister. But every story has the hero. Back when I was a designer, I named my business Hero. I named it after my old man because my old man was a truck driver and he did not enjoy his job, but he went and did it every day. And the thing that I always admired about my dad, and that is dangerous, <laughs> and it will come back to bite me. I need a new laptop anyways. I know, I got a child's laptop, leave me alone. But the thing I admired about my dad is he got in that truck and he went every day to work. And when he came home, meaner than a grizzly bear, like the dad on the wonder years, don't talk until, don't speak until spoken to, the old man was blowing off steam and he didn't think anybody was paying attention, but I did. And I wanted to be different in my dad, not like, fuck you dad, I got all the answers, man, you don't know. I wanted to be different than my dad in the way that I wanted to be happy. I wanted to identify with what I would do for a living. I didn't want to feel stuck. My old man retired this past week. But the problem is, is he spent his whole life waiting for this moment. And I think I retired about 25 years ago when I just decided that I would try to live every day for what I would want to do, not for what I would have to do. So you have the option to be the hero. Now the internet knows everything, right? If there's something you want to figure out, you go to the internet and you ask it, how do I fix this door? How do I do this? How do I do that? And there's tons of lists that'll tell you all the great things. 10 ways to do this, 10 ways to do that. Five things you didn't know, three ways not to be a jerk off. And I know I'm being that jerk off right now, telling you how to do something. But I'm telling it to you based on talking to a lot of people and figuring out the core, what made them who they are. In other words, there really is no universal secret, right? You can look at this, you can Google that, but at the end of the day, it's all too Pinteresty to be real. You know, it's a double tap, maybe a retweet, occasionally a share, and if you're hardcore, you'll just take a screenshot and claim it as your own, and you'll get more engagement. But when you look across the internet, there's all kinds of answers, right? And it's just all kind of vague, and people love it. It's clickbait, because people get desperate, and they want to go dig and find an answer. And that's where they go to dig. But you look at those lists, you realize that what is most important is to put in the hard work, to have a focus. And you have to learn how to work for the right reasons. You've got to get that voice of yours to be the loudest one in your head. And I think everybody as a creative knows, as you move on, when you started out, remember there was that voice was fighting for good design, fighting for good work. And then eventually the second voice popped up that said, hey dummy, if you just follow what Rick from Marketing's saying, you can get this done by three o'clock. You can save your files, you can take it over to them and you can be home by five. Oh, wait a minute, I'm in California. You can be home by 7.30. 
Remember that voice? The voice that used to want to just do the right work, but then it got shut out because you started to hear the other voices of what it takes to get things done. The good quotes and everything will only work and they'll inspire you if you have a plan, if you have a vision of you and who you're supposed to be and the way that you're going to be able to bring it together. But that's a problem because maybe you don't know who you are. And this is where this shit gets real. I'm going to try to show you. Act four, save yourself. Apple S, right? You save your work. You save often. You don't want to lose anything. But have you started to save yourself? This is a challenge that I gave to the listeners of my podcast. And this is a challenge that I would like to give to each of you right now. The challenge is this. Take a month get to know you. But because when you figure out what it is that you want to do, you're going to already have busy work, right? Because we all live in the most desirable place in America. I've lived in a lot of places and they all sucked compared to California. Here's the thing. It takes a while to get going. It takes a while to wean yourself off of the drugs. It takes a while to get that open schedule that you want. So this is a challenge that I made, and I thought about it. When we had the election, I got really, really scared when I thought it was going to go the way that it did. And I, last year, made, after Brexit, I made two different lists. My podcast that I do full-time, which is subscription-based, and, and I get to spend, I do 200 episodes a year. I'm available for my listeners four to five days a week. We spend eight to ten hours together. And I thought there's a responsibility there. There's two ways that this can go. If it's Hillary, it's kind of more of the same. And if it's DeFuhrer, it's going to be a different path. And the different path was because I thought that the world was going to change. I thought the way that money was going to pass hands was going to change. I thought business was going to change. Healthcare, you know, there's, it's a, there's a lot of variables up in the air right now. And I wanted to get my audience prepared for that. So I really thought about the best way that I could break down that focus of getting to who you are and being like the people that we've been so interested about to do interviews with, to listen, people that we're fans of, people that we collect. So this is the challenge. Take one week and study your personality, right? And I mean, study your fucking personality. When you say something that's funny, make a note in your head. People like it when I do this. When somebody says, you know what, you're a really good friend, thanks for listening to me. Make a note of that. People know that I'm understanding that I listen. Think about everything that is uniquely you. When you're talking to people, and you know, they're like, oh, you put one sock on, then a shoe, and then you go over to the other foot and put on a sock and then a shoe? You fucking animal, why would you do that? You know, you could just do, 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 do. That's how machinery works. That's manufacturing. Why are you getting handcrafted with putting on your feet? Put it on your feet. Whenever you do something that strikes you as, oh, other people aren't there, do yourself a favor and write that down. And it doesn't have to be an analog sheet of paper because everybody knows the best app in your phone is that notes app, right? I mean, who here is just jamming notes into that thing all the time? I do a podcast for a living, so I have to observe things and I write them in my phone. But for you, follow your personality. Do that for a week. Next, I know this sounds hokey, but think about it. You know, they hold like, hey man, if you want a million dollars, what would you do? I've had that conversation with my family before. And for me, the answer is, what I'm doing right now. Just not stressed out, I'll own my home, I don't have the fucking Land Rover I've been dreaming about for a decade. One way or another, that Land Rover is going to happen. If I got to buy an 80s model, it's going to happen. I'm going to get that damn car. I'm sick of fantasizing about something I can't have. But think about your dreams, not what you want, like material things, but what is really your dream? Like, what do you want to do? To start a podcast and do it full time was crazy because the only people that were doing it were celebrities. And I'm not a fucking celebrity. Newsflash. 
And it was a lot of like, oh, if I did a talk show, like I think that there's room for people to hang out and have a conversation that's based on creativity four and five days a week. But will people pay to hang out with me? Will people pay to hear me talk? Like it was crazy, but I wrote that idea down and I, I, I tried to pursue it and line my life to it. So whatever it is that you want to do for just a week, just write it down. And guess what? In that week, if you say something funny or you say something touching, you can always go back and add to that personality list. Next, this is where it gets real. What's your time look like? Because it's really cute for me to tell you guys, hey, follow your path, follow your heart. But what does your time really look like? Because living out here, everybody knows that shit is real. We've got the most expensive rent in the country or mortgages if you're a baller. So because you're locked, locked into the system, because you're an adult, your time is limited. So whatever you need to do that's unique to you, you've got to be realistic on what is your time. Could you take one night a week, make a deal with your partner, and say, hey, when I get home on Tuesdays, I'm going to just come home with like a sandwich, I'm going straight over to my office, and I'm just going to grind, and if you could take care of the kids on Tuesdays, I promise you, you can always go to the movie on Wednesdays. I'll be the anchor. Just give me one night. Because remember, you married me because you love me. And you want me to have my dreams, right? Look at you. You're so cute. Let me have my dreams, darling. No, seriously, make a deal with whoever's in your world, whatever sort of overhead that you have, and figure out what is your time. Can you give up two nights a week? Can you give up time on the weekend? Like, what does it really look like? What do you have? What are you working with? Maybe you did win the lottery. Maybe you got a shitload of time. Maybe on a piece of paper, you just go all the time in the world. And last, what's your money look like? And on the money, you can write zero. Because in the world of technology that we live in, one of the greatest things about becoming a freelance designer is it's, you know, if one of your bros used to hook you up with a stolen version of Photoshop, Congratulations, you're now a graphic designer. That damn cloud showed up. Mm, cloud. The cloud's actually great because when we were all starting way back when, we're talking thousands of dollars to get your rig going. Now, for, and I'm not sponsored by the Creative Cloud, Adobe would never touch me with a million bucks because I talk about pulling out, but connecting things won't touch me either. But Nobody touches me. That's why I'm obsessed with pulling out. <laughs> I got a 10-year wedding anniversary next week. I mean, you know, I know what I'm doing. But what does your money really, really look like? What can you invest? What do you have to give to yourself? And a way that you might want to think about this is if your dream was to do an apparel line. You know, you really think you've got a unique idea for the market and you want to do an apparel line. Well, maybe if you look at your money and it's not right, well, maybe you start with something easier like enamel pins, or as I like to call them, brooches. Maybe you broach your way to the top, you know? Maybe you start out with doing a fun sticker pack and see how it goes, and stickers that are successful move their way up to production for a t-shirt. Like, you don't have to have all the money in the world, and I'm not a big believer in business loans because it gives you a false sense of security, and you've got all this money, and you think all this great shit's gonna happen, but because you haven't earned any of that money, you don't know what's gonna happen. And real quickly, going out and chasing your dream, you can create so much debt that you're going to be more strung out on the drugs than you ever were before. So you make these four lists and you put them together like this. Your personality, your dreams, your money, and your time. That works out conveniently to be your emotional plane and then reality. And when you really think about all of that and you put it together right there in the middle, that's what you should be doing because it's the perfect combination of the things that make you unique. It's the perfect combination of what you wanna do, but it's tethered into reality of how much time you have to build it and how much money you have to invest in it. So if you spend a month training your brain to think this way, and then you print out those creepy notes in your phone, and you put them up on a wall, and you look right in the middle, you'll know what your crossroad is. And I don't know how some people figured out how to do what it is that they do, 
But I promise you, if you do this for a month, it may not change your world, but it'll change the way that you look at your life. It'll change the way that you look at you, and it'll help you hear that voice in your head a little bit louder. Hire yourself. That's what this is all about. Everyone who I interview, even if it's the guy who runs the global brand Adidas, you say, well, he works for Adidas. Well, yes, but he hired himself. He took on the responsibility of being a leader and being a visionary. And when he got as far as he could go with Adidas, he walked away, went and worked in motorcycles, worked in consulting, and got so good at everything else that when Adidas was ready to make a change, they brought Paul back. So this just isn't for the freelancers and the entrepreneurs. Hire yourself as a mentality of give yourself permission to succeed and to follow who you are. This is artwork that I did for myself. The San Francisco print right here. I made that, we took it to San Francisco when we lived in upstate New York. In a one weekend, I sold 200 of those. But we only brought 100. But my wife, who's incredibly smart, and my business partner said, oh, no, 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 stupid. Don't take it off the wall. Leave it on the wall. When somebody wants to buy it, tell them that we're sold out, but they can buy it now, and we'll ship it to them when we get home. So we, hold, we sold 100 more of those that weekend just on people seeing it in our booth. And we would print it, reprint it, sell it, wholesale it. That design that I worked on, hired myself, nobody said, you know what the world needs? It needs a cool illustration of San Francisco. And I'm not saying that it's cool, I'm just using a word, an adjective. It's medium. But I hired myself to do that. And it resonated with people. I made sure to not make it specifically one part of San Francisco, because the problem with consumers are, is they go, oh, I see you have this street, but do you have my street? I was like, well, let's, let's come over your house and look out your window and draw your view. San Francisco, it's on a hill, it's old houses that are all worth like $4 million. That print has been designed in the span of a couple of weeks. And I did that back in 2010. For seven years, it's been in circulation and it's made me six figures because it just keeps getting wholesaled over and over again. That's the only time in my career in the world of design that I've ever been paid six figures for a design job. It's the most I ever made, because I hired myself. And it still earns till this day. I get calls, people want 100 of them, we box them up, we ship them, I don't even print them anymore, and they go out to somebody. My LA print, I've sold 600 of those. This guy right here, I think that's maybe at eight or a 1,000. For a weekend, if I go out and, and would do a craft show, I would make you know 150 of these, 200 of those, 150 of those, and just blow them out in one weekend in those markets. And that's how we were funding ourselves. In 2009, when the economy melted down, last time we wrapped up a Republican presidency, sidebar, the economy melted down. Everybody knows that, that crunch. And that was when my wife and I said, you know, we love the design, we love making art, but damn, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have clients? Wouldn't it be nice if we could do it for ourselves? And that's when we had a boutique, we started making our own merchandise, we started making our own product line, and that's when we really started to focus on the notion of hiring ourselves. That's when we started making the best money that we'd ever made in our career. Now I'm retired from design. So I don't mind giving you my secrets. I do a podcast full time. And I don't mind giving you my numbers because I'm, I'm not a part of it anymore. I sell alpaca. But what I would like to do is inspire you to think about what can you make and give yourself that freedom and create that income. When my wife and I moved from Buffalo, New York to Long Beach, incredibly different cost of living. We were able to live for about 10 months or a year just off of selling our surplus of stock. Because when we knew that we were making the move, I had my assistant, party friend, print as much shit as possible. And I would just go out on the weekends, do shows, keep up an Etsy shop, and we were just churning just on, on doing that. And it all started with this horrible, horrible Brooklyn illustration. That is the, I mean, Brooklyn can be sketchy, but that's gotta be the sketchiest block. I mean, you just would fall right out. 
It's flat. It's horrible. Look at that. There's actually like a booger of a pencil mark in there that I never took out. I wanted to put things on top of the buildings. I did this over eight years ago. And I did it. We took it to Brooklyn. I knew we were going to Brooklyn. I thought, wow, what if we just had something that said Brooklyn and we could sell it? It was that weekend when we sold that and sold so many of them that when we came back home, we're like, we're on to something. All of those other prints were inspired by this one shot in the dark. I maybe worked a week on that night and day trying to get it done around all my other stuff. And when we sold out all of them in one weekend, we knew that we'd kind of figured out something. And for me, I'd always wanted to be an architect. But guess what? Being an architect is a shit ton of work. And it's not fun. Most people just like lay pipes all day long or show electricians where wires go. I just wanted to be the guy that when you look at the newspaper that says, coming in 2019, Star Wars land. Oh, it's so perfect. Holy shit, that's gonna be in Anaheim. I just wanna be the guy that makes that fun thing. But that's like 1% of all architects. The other 99% wanna hang themselves with what's those tools, T-squares and French curves. Some things are just bigger than you. And when you figure out how to follow yourself, make your own product, I'd like to really, really suggest that you do this. Flirt with the universe. When you know who you want to be and you start to figure out how you want to get there, show the world the person that you want to become and the world will see that person and they will make you that person. I was a guy that wanted his own talk show. I now have my own talk show and I do better than I did with design. My responsibility is eight hours a week to hang out and talk to interesting people. I love my job. I love going to work. I love what I get to do. It's the most proud and the most free I've ever been. This is me flirting. When I moved out here, I know, amateur move, I fell in love with Disneyland. I know you've been around it your whole life but I'm white trash from Kentucky. And in my neighborhood, if you got to go to Disneyland once in a lifetime, that was a big deal. And when I moved out here and said, oh, unlimited magic, I'll buy that pass in a minute. And in fact, when people used to come in my booth, if they opened up their purse and I saw they had the Disney pass in their purse, I would say, uh, oh, we give the discount for that. They're like, why? I'm like, cause I'm fucking crazy and I love Mickey Mouse. Why are you going to say no to 15%? So when I came out here, I fell in love with Disneyland. And I set a dream for myself that I wanted to do some work for them. So I spent a while studying the work of Disney. And I figured out everything Disney does, the reason why it commands attention is it's done in three layers. There's a foreground you have to look past. There's a background that goes on forever. But in the middle is the jewel of what they want to show you. This is a gig poster for some shitty bands. All their names are on this tombstone. The path leads up to the castle, and in the background, there's the bats, the moon, and the sky. Black Keys, another shitty band. You gotta look past all of this to see the boat, to see the skies, to go up to the copy. This, dissecting a bicycle and turning it into amusement park. I thought, I'm just gonna make work that maybe is related and on the spectrum of Disneyland. And so I was flirting with the world, flirting with the universe that I wanted to do this work. And lo and behold, living out here, putting myself close to my dream, somebody came in my booth, saw the work, and this is me scoring. I got hired to do my dream and to work with Mickey Mouse. This is an illustration of all the buildings in Fantasyland. Fun fact, it's a limited edition silkscreen poster, seven colors. Number one, one of 250, sold to a person whose position in life is manager of Fantasyland. What kind of job is that? I don't know if it makes a resume look impressive or very, very sad. (laughs) Oh, so now you want a real job that you've been babysitting Peter Pan and Snow White? I think we're going to go with the guy that we got off of Craigslist, who's mildly sketchy. But they let me do it. There's Walt's name. There's his words. Every you know, town you know, or every land has a monument, a plaque. You guys don't care because you're from here. This wows people on the other side of the country. 
This is what I got to do first, though. I said, if they only hire me one time, I want to make sure that I get my dream in the first shot. So now, like a dork, every time that I walk up to the front and I look at the train station and then I look at the castle, I get to say to myself, out of all the artists who work for Disneyland, I got to do this. I was hired to do this. I did it officially. I didn't do it inspired by. I did it for the company. And nobody can ever take that away from me. And there was many nights when I was trying to do this in the podcast and it was too much work and I was tired. I didn't want to work. I'd be up in Long Beach, 13 miles away from the park and I'd hear boom, boom, boom. I said, you know what? If Mickey's not giving up, fucking Bricky's not giving up. <laughs> and I got my mouse and I went on through the night. Get an iPad Pro, change your life. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, it's not over, but I like your idea. So what's the worst thing that could happen, right? So you do this month long, you get to know yourself better, you're more self-aware. What's the worst thing that could happen if you could step out and do your own thing? Because I'll tell you this, I've reinvented myself several times, going from band to artist to podcaster, and I'll tell you this, it's not easy to do these type of things. It's stressful, it's depressing. There was a year out here where I started to think, you know, at least I got a lot of life insurance. So if something happens to me, the love of my life will be okay. And that is no way to think about your life and who you wanna be. But I was in the darkest of darkest mindsets when I was trying to figure out how to do what I wanted to do. And I'll tell you this, when you are lost, when all seems helpless and, and hopeless and you don't know where you're gonna go, that means when you are really, really close to finding something special. And sometimes you just have to go there, you have to shovel the shit, you have to go back to the beginning. Seniority is nothing in the world of the arts. You know, you got a nice job right now, but building this thing, following you, it's not gonna be easy. And I'm not talking about something that you can do in weeks or months. I'm talking about a journey that might be years. Some parting words. Be a survivor. Let bad things inspire you to do good things. I have found that getting out, meeting people, talking to folks, being engaging, caring, listening, and not always talking, which is hard for me, it really does make a matter in things. The people that you know are the people that are gonna support you and hire you and work with you. It's very, very important to let all the negative shit happen in the world boil down to making you the best person that you can be. And everything offends someone. I talked about a lot of offensive shit tonight. I didn't ask beforehand, can I cuss? I didn't ask beforehand, can I talk about pulling out? I just did it because it felt right. And I don't worry. <laughs> Later. Everything offends someone. And there's so many people in this world that are worried about like, oh, I don't know, is that gonna be offensive? Unless you're being a dick, just be you. So many people talk themselves out of being this person that they wanna be because they're afraid it's gonna rub somebody else the wrong way. Everything offends someone, so just be you. But if you're polite and nice and you laugh and you let them know, it's okay that I'm making these rude jokes because I'm just trying to make you have fun tonight. I'm trying to make you laugh while you learn a little something. I'm trying to share all this knowledge with you. People give you a pass, and they appreciate that you went that way. Hopefully, people give you a pass. See, this is designed to sort of suck up after all the weird shit. But most importantly, out of all the things that you can do, seriously, just be you. It's what made your heroes your heroes. It'll be what makes you somebody else's hero. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.